Chapter 7. Lance invited Will to a house party near the Ukrainian village. He walked upstairs and took down whiskey and knocked knuckles in the kitchen with a couple bike messengers he used to work with. He spoke briefly with a bartender at the Beetle a few blocks down from this, her apartment, who had her hair up in a forgotten style and a boa around her shoulders in an old American way. A redhead. He walked upstairs, took down whiskey, reached the roof of the building where Kids were dressed for the cool autumn night. A band played hard and loud. He had heard them from the street. They played hard like they knew the set would be short-lived. Neighborhood complaints calling cops. Will smiled bright and large. The sound made sense in the dark sky and the girls standing around and into the beat were a fly. And he had hung out before with a lead guitar player and seen his paintings. I never heard him play. An acquaintance behind him tapped his shoulder. He had a smoke with her at her own party a few weeks back. She too smiled bright and large, and her boyfriend played the keyboard in the band right before them with a colorful knit hat on his head. This was all too good to last, and the cops came like usual and were polite like not. And the band was respectful like usual and quit, just as Friday shook hands with Saturday. Kung Fu grip. Back downstairs, Will fought claustrophobia in the kitchen, and the counter cut into his lower back, and he turned and looked over the choice liquors free of chasers. Some friends reunited in the kitchen while he found his way to the freezer for ice. Subsequently, water trails down his warm hands. He was underdressed like usual in a black tourist shirt that read Chicago in blue against his proper gray wool long coat. Underdressed from the beaten leather docksiders on his bare feet to the rag tied round his head. Nobody approached him he didn't already know. The girls he caught looking looked away. Most were looking for the wrong reason, if disgust was a reason. The conversations he had were all precursor to less than heartfelt laughs. Even Will's friends could not get much out of him. His greatest rapport tonight was with the bottle, and when a 175 Jack made a late entrance, he gripped it by the handle, held it high, and took it to the people. Tonight, the people weren't taking. He filled a beer bottle with whiskey and carefully replaced the other on the counter, went into the low light of an abandoned party room, sat on an easy chair and tried to think his way out of the oncoming depression. The alien nation slaughtered his reason. His was not an ongoing subservience to the drink, no. His hands never shook for it. His was the lot of the bingers, the lot of the blacked out and robbed blind in the world. One of the last things he remembered was Lance offering to take him home. He refused. Girls with boas down to their ankles held company with swindlers and unconscionable sorts who would slam your arm in the door for spilling your drink on their woman. Old school Chicago thugging. The redhead of the party reminded Will of what he had never witnessed and never will, the loose necktie on the 40s bebop dance floor, getting top hat up to Thelonious Monk and tapping the beat down in Max Roach Town. The ready physicality of a younger urban America expressed in love and war, pushing down garter belts with one hand under the table and raising poker stakes with a silver dollar with the other. Full houses that fall, empty pockets with sweaty hands playing on margin for the teeth in your head. The days when you got beat down and never thought lawsuit, but simply took what was your due and held the handkerchief to the modest gash on your head. Tried not to let the blood stay in the bar while you took down a tumbler on the house. Long gone those days when debts were settled in unsettling ways.